The island of Sodor was in the midst of a fierce storm. It had rained heavily for several days, and with the rain came the fog. The little western, being so close to the ocean, was getting hit the worst. This fog is far too thick to be running in, Duck complained to the others one morning. How can I be expected to run safely when I can't see my own rails in front of me? Better watch yourself, Duck, Donald chimed in mockingly, for if you aren't careful, the fog phantom might get ya. The what? asked Oliver inquisitively, who was still new to the branch. The fog phantom, answered Duck grumpily. It's an old railway legend of an engine who got lost to time in a thick fog and now roams the rails in an attempt to find other engines to drag off into the fog. Pure rubbish if you ask me. Not necessarily my wee engine, said Donald. I knew an engine back in Scotland who swore up and down he'd seen it one night. We awoke the next morning and to find he was gone, vanished into thin air. Stop it, Donald. Don't be foolish, Duck snapped sharply. He turned his attention to Oliver, who looked most uneasy. You've nothing to worry about, Oliver. Donald here is just trying to get a reaction out of you. There is no fog, Phantom, so don't get yourself worked up over nothing. Oliver was glad to have Duck's assurance, but he still couldn't help feeling uneasy. Later that day, Oliver was puffing down the branch. The fog swirled around him, engulfing his surroundings. Everything looked very ominous with nothing but their silhouettes outlined by the mist, and Oliver was longing for the comfort of his nice warm shed. As Oliver continued his uneasy travels, he thought he could faintly hear the chuffing of an engine behind him. Then, without warning, his brakes suddenly slammed hard on. He came to a full stop swiftly, feeling rather startled after already being on edge. What on earth have we stopped for? Oliver called. It wasn't me who pulled the brakes, his driver called back. It must have been the guard in the rear coach. I'll go and see what's up. The driver returned shortly. The guard says he saw an engine rushing towards us, the driver said. Says he couldn't make out the shape through the fog, but he saw it vanish suddenly and pulled the brakes. He wanted us to go back and make sure there wasn't a crash. I heard the puffing of the engine, Oliver replied, but I certainly didn't hear a crash. Yes, but I don't think it would be a bad idea to go back and look, the driver replied. Oliver was still nervous, and though he didn't say so, he really didn't want to go back. The driver eased the train back up the line. However, there was no sign of an accident to be found. Everyone was most confused and decided to report the accident when they reached the next station. Oliver in particular was very unnerved now. Further up the line, Duck was waiting at Callan for his passengers to board. The rain was most miserable and Duck was cursing it to himself. He was suddenly snapped out of his thoughts by a loud biff from the yard adjacent to him. He looked over and was shocked to see a line of trucks careening down a siding. Someone had bumped them, though as he peered through the fog, Duck could see that there was no engine in the yard. He was all alone. Nobody seemed to have noticed the trucks aside from him, so he kept quiet about it. But as he left the station, he couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or some thing, was watching him from the yard. Meanwhile, Donald was collecting a train of trucks from Arlesburg Harbor. He'd acted confident earlier, but now, the rain and mist were beginning to get to his smoke box. He puffed silently into the siding to collect his trucks, and had just been coupled up, when he spotted what looked like an engine standing stationary on the line in front of him. Donald blinked, but the engine was still there. Who's there? Donald called into the fog. He got no reply. Instead, the engine began to slowly move towards him. Donald was scared now, and out of instinct he began to back away. 
As he did, the pace of the engine seemed to increase. Donald moved swiftly backwards, but the engine kept advancing towards him. Stay back! Donald called, but to no avail. Suddenly, Donald's brake van hit the buffers at the end of the pier. There was nowhere left for him to run. The Caledonian engine shut his eyes tightly and prayed for it all to stop. Just as Donald was sure the engine would drag him away into the fog, the puffing stopped, and there was silence. Donald slowly opened his eyes to find the harbor deserted. The engine had gone. What in God's name just happened? Donald's driver asked. Donald couldn't find his voice to answer. He just quietly steamed out of the harbor, not sure if he'd ever be the same again. That night at the sheds, the three engines sat quietly in their berths, none of them knowing how to begin a discussion of the day's events. What's up with you three? asked Douglas. You all look as if you've seen a ghost. The three engines just looked at each other in silent sympathy. No words needed to be spoken for them to understand what they'd been through, and they knew no matter what they said, the day's events would never make sense. All they knew was that regardless of what had occurred earlier, all three engines hoped that they'd never again have an encounter with the Fog Phantom. <laughs>